experience that I had this past summer when I decided to get my vitamin D levels tested. Um, the experience was very instructive for me and I suspect it'll be instructive for you as well. So before we talk a little bit about my story, I thought it might be a good idea for us just to be refreshed as to why vitamin D is important. First of all, if you're supplementing or taking in calcium in your diet, vitamin D plays a very important role in helping the body to absorb calcium and phosphorus, which obviously is important in terms of uh, just bone health over time. Interestingly enough, uh, vitamin D plays a role in the production of testosterone as examples or hormones. Uh, testosterone is needed by both men and women and plays an important role in maintaining lean body mass, energy levels, um, helps us to fight against heart disease. Uh, there's all kinds of benefits um, attached to appropriate hormone levels of testosterone over time and vitamin D aids in that. Another interesting fact is that uh, vitamin D has been linked to uh, cognitive function so that if you're at adequate levels of vitamin D, you're probably able to maintain good cognitive function long into life. If your vitamin D levels have not been adequate, it could lead and be one of the causes for you know, dementia and other cognitive um, issues that come up for us as we age. And so vitamin D plays a very important role in that. When I was reviewing the literature, there were a few of the things that came up as I was going through it. Interesting, um, an increase in asthma for severe asthma for children uh, has been linked to low vitamin D levels. Um, it's actually been linked to increases in cancer over time. Uh, vitamin D has been linked to the maintenance of just healthy body weight and vitamin D also has been linked to the development of rheumatoid arthritis for women. So low levels increase the incidence of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, there's also been links to autoimmune, autoimmune diseases like uh, multiple sclerosis as an example. Low vitamin D levels have been linked to you know, various autoimmune diseases over the years. So it's an important nutrient, it's an important vitamin that we uh, focus in on. And so you'd think that we would all be attentive to this area, but of course the statistics bear out the fact that for the most part, there's a lot of us walking around with low vitamin D levels. And so there's a couple of studies that I just want to reference uh, for you. For example, you look at a study that specifically focused on vitamin D levels for children. Uh, and it was data collected from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, and this was in the U.S. And it found that 9% or 7.6 million children across the U.S. were at very low, very deficient levels of vitamin D. And that was defined as 50 nanograms per milliliter uh, of blood. Well, another 61% or 50.8 million uh, were deficient. Maybe not the same level of deficiency, but were deficient and that was defined as 15 to 29 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, the authors of the study said, we expected the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency would be high, but the magnitude of the problem nationwide was shocking. And that was uh, Dr. Juhi Kumar, a fellow of pediatrics at uh, Children's Hospital, Albert Einstein uh, Medicine uh, Hospital. Data recently presented at the American Association of Clinical Chemistry meetings showed that Americans have low vitamin D levels overall. About 77% of the population is at lower than um, uh, appropriate levels and that was defined as less than 30 nanogram per milliliter um, circulating in the blood. So uh, clearly, you know, people are not getting enough um, vitamin D in their bodies and what are some of the reasons for it? You know, one reason can be we just live in the northern hemisphere. So if you live, you know, in the northern climate, there's just less sunshine. And so um, we have to be a little more attentive to this area because there may not be the same exposure to light over time. The other thing is, um, you know, a lot of us, when we are outside, we're so, so paranoid about, you know, skin cancer that we're covering up. Um, we're using, lathering our bodies with sunscreen. We're doing all kinds of things to protect ourselves from the sun when, ironically, uh, sun exposure can lead to health. Now, we don't want to go out there and bake in the sun at the most intense time of the day, but we do want to get some sun exposure. And a lot of people are intentionally staying out of the sun because of probably more than necessary concern around uh, skin cancer. Um, some people, because of religious reasons, have headdress and robes that cover skin. Um, maybe it's people who are shut-ins and they just can't get outside. Other people might have occupations that keep them from getting outside as much as they'd like. So there's a lot of different reasons. As we age as well, different metabolic processes in our body are impacted. It was interesting when I looked at the literature, uh, your kidneys may be, um, as you age, have more difficulty you know, converting 
the vitamin D to its active form that the body can use. And so aging generally makes our bodies less efficient at processing vitamin D, and so we may need to supplement to counteract that. Uh, sometimes for folks, their digestive tract can't adequately absorb vitamin D, and conditions like Crohn's disease, fibrosis, and celiac disease can have an impact on that. Um, even your diet, you may not be taking in foods that have vitamin D and examples of that, and it's probably very relevant for people with a vegan diet. Um, you know, eggs have good levels, uh, fish, fish oil, meats, that kind of thing, cheese, have vitamin D levels. And so if those are not parts of your regular diet, again, you may want to go, you know, maybe I need to be supplementing just to sort of take that into account. If you're obese, uh, vitamin D uh, is extracted from the blood by fat cells, which can alter the, its release into the blood circulation. So people with a body mass index of 30 or greater um, usually have low circulating vitamin D levels. So uh, again, weight gain and, um, and body mass index, uh, like they said in the study above 30, has, a, has an impact. So all these things sort of conspire to create an, you know, an epidemic of sorts around not having adequate levels of vitamin, uh, vitamin D. Well, I was somewhat aware of this information. I mean, I had a general sense that you know, vitamin D levels uh, were important to maintain you know, at appropriate levels. Um, but I was basically not exactly sure where my levels were at. You know, I've been supplementing, and I thought it might be a good idea for me just to get this checked. Now, I thought that maybe I maybe was taking too much vitamin D. And so I booked in a meeting with my naturopathic physician, Gord, and we got together, and uh, Gord uh, drew the blood, and it was in a July, latter part of July, and um, we sent it off to be examined. Now, I walked away out of that meeting thinking there probably wouldn't be any issues. I actually had a number of tests done that day. Um, I refer to it as basically a biometrics assessment, and one of the tests was for vitamin D. I really didn't think too much of it, really. I just wanted to get, you know, sober second thought. I thought it was maybe over, over supplementing. Because I had come through a number of months being outside. I'm an active triathlete, so I was biking on a regular basis. I was running on a regular basis. I was also supplementing with vitamin D. So in my multivitamin, there's about 400 international units of vitamin D. And probably on average about three times a week, I was taking another 2,000 international units of vitamin D. So I didn't think there'd be any issues at all. Well, the day came, and Gord's office uh, called me up, and I booked a meeting. I went to see Gord. We had a bit of a chit-chat, and Gord reconfirmed to me. He said, you know, Sean, ideally I'd like to see someone like you in your circumstances, your activity level, to be around 80 nanograms per milliliter. And the results have come back, and this is where we're at, 34. I was absolutely flabbergasted. I thought, this can't be. I mean, I'm doing all the right things. I'm getting sun exposure, I thought. Um, I'm supplementing, um, I'm eating a lot of the foods that uh, would be, you know, have vitamin D uh, in them, and yet I was at 34, so very low level compared to where my doctor thought I should be at. So I said to Gore, I said, if, if I'm at that level, what's happening with the average person is basically doing nothing to have an impact on their vitamin D levels? And he said, Sean, that's exactly why. I hope at some point the standard of care for individuals is that we're doing these tests because we have all these sleeping sort of issues, these issues that don't come up, they don't knock us over the side of the head, but they're chronic issues that can negatively impact our health long term. And low vitamin D is one of those. I mean, for most people, it's not something that's readily obvious. The symptoms aren't yelling at us, and it's really a chronic issue over time that can lead to problems. So. I walked away going, you know what, I'm a strong advocate for, you know, vitamin D testing, maybe annually, certainly if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, you should get tested on a regular basis. I was doing a lot of the right things and I was low. And so, um, very, very instructive and, um, and, you know, I learned a lot through that experience. I made some assumptions that were bang on wrong. So, you know, Gordon and I talked about what's the protocol going forward, what should I begin doing? And so here are the strategies that Gord had outlined to me. Now, this presentation is not to be construed as, as medical advice. Um, so this is just my experience. You need to go see your, your doctor, your naturopathic physician, get yourself tested, find out where your levels are, get your doctor's advice about what they think the appropriate level will be, and then develop your own personal program. But what Gord did with me is, first of all, we began supplementing with more uh, vitamin D, D3 specifically, and we've ramped up to over 10,000 international units uh, per day in drop form, so 10 drops a day, 
and uh, we're going to test again in three months and see where that's at. As well, to be more conscious of uh, sun exposure, and uh, so ideally a couple of times a day for 15 minutes, not at the most intense time of the day, but maybe in the mornings and in the after, in later afternoon. Um, in addition to that, I'm supplementing with fish oil, and so those things are, are hopefully going to have a big impact on my vitamin D levels over the next few months. Uh, foods that help. Now, I continue to eat these foods, but again, just to reiterate, fish, fish oil, cheese, meat products, that kind of thing. So there's a number of products, and if you Google it, you'll find a listing of different products you may want to make sure you're integrating into your diet. And then probably the most important thing, get tested. And you probably want to get tested uh, regularly. In other words, you know, maybe once a year go in, test is not super expensive, it's a good peace of mind exercise to go through. So that was my experience. Like I said at the beginning of the presentation, very instructive for me. I hope it's a little bit instructive for you. If you've never been tested for your vitamin D levels, I would really encourage you to do that. Contact your doctor, see if you can get your levels tested. Um, it's a little bit hit and miss in terms of um, people's experiences. Sometimes, you know, healthcare providers are not set up or maybe a little bit dismissive about the importance of these uh, supplements or these vitamin levels. Um, I would really suggest that if your healthcare providers are a little bit reluctant, you may want to then talk to someone who can. I know that my doctor is a naturopathic physician. I also have a regular MD, but the naturopath was the one that I used to um, sort of get this process going. So there are options out there and I encourage you to pursue them and I hope you found this presentation helpful. Um, if you want to get more information about Take Charge of Change, you can visit our website. The listing's here, www.takechargeofchange.com. Please feel free, to, feel free to email us if you have any questions or give us a phone call. And like I said, feel free to poke around our website. And uh, if you want to have a follow-up conversation, we'd love to see if we can be of any assistance to you. Take care.